at least this time, it was close. He was a guy, you, had, you believed he was a coach and you wanted to play for him. I don't care what the scoreboard says, at the end of the game, in my book, we're going to be winners. And in the end, you know what came out? His love for the game, his love for his players, the compassion that he had. In Hoosiers, I probably cried the most because there were several moments when Gene Hackman, at the, before the last game, says, I love you guys. You know, you're like, oh, it's okay to cry. You're trying to hide the tears. I thought Hoosiers was an incredible inspiration for me. It doesn't make any difference whether you're a high school team chasing that dream or you're a hard and professional, highly paid basketball team. It's all the same. That's about as good as you're going to do making a sports movie. It's superbly shot, superbly paced, acted, music. I thought it was a tremendous, tremendous sports movie. I think that one lasts forever. I think Hoosiers lasts forever. An absolute classic. When they talk about sports movies to be passed down from one generation to the next, that's got to be one of them. That's it for this week's edition. I'm Stuart Scott. Let the debating begin. Hey, join us next Tuesday night at 7 Eastern as our countdown series on who's number one continues. Big ups. for 18 players in search of gold. Some famous bets will return. Others will not. For some, maybe it's a last go around. For others, it's a new beginning. For all, it's a challenge. Big saves will be needed. And timely goals are a must if the USA's road to Athens is to end in gold. Greece has a sister city. It's called Nashville, Tennessee, and the road to Athens will continue tonight in this city as the USA women's national team will take on their rivals from the north, Canada, in the first game for the USA since announcing their Olympic squad of 18 earlier this week. A pleasant good evening, everyone. Welcome to Nashville along with Wendy Gabara Palladino. I'm JP Della Camera. Wendy, let's get your thoughts first on the squad of 18. Well, JP, I think the real story is the new names, the names that were not on the 2003 World Cup team. And in goal, Kristen Luckabill makes the U.S. Olympic team. She replaces Siri Mullenix. Then Heather Mitz has gotten some quality time this year with the U.S. team, and she makes a spot in the defense. The big name in the midfield is newcomer Lindsay Tarp. They're just crashing onto the scene, and she is playing fantastic. And then up top, the youngster, Heather O'Reilly, from the University of North Carolina, beating Shannon McMillan out of that other forward position. And had Heather O'Reilly not broken her leg last year, she probably would have made that last World Cup team instead. Now, she gets a try at Olympic gold. Only one power toothbrush brand is the most used and recommended by dental professionals. Sonicare Elite by Philips, with patented Sonic technology and bristle tips that move three times faster than all other leading power toothbrushes for a deep cleaning experience unlike any other. Sonicare Elite removes stains and reverses gingivitis for whiter teeth and healthier gums, guaranteed. Stop brushing. Start Sonicare. Fourth of July, you can create fireworks with paint at America's first choice for paint tools and techniques, the Home Depot. Discover our revolutionary color solution center, a complete resource for painting ideas, where you can mix and match from the largest color palette in America. Only the Home Depot has it. Now through July 5th, get $5 off one gallon cans of quality bear and Glidden Evermore paint by mail-in rebate. Vibrant colors, brilliant solutions, one place, the Home Depot. You can do it, we can help. It's a part of the game. Is it a part of you? 
Introducing new Gatorade X Factor. Two great flavors fused together under one cap. ESPN's presentation of U.S. Soccer is brought to you by Bud Light. Fresh, smooth, real. It's all here. Philips, healthcare, lifestyle, and technology products that bring soccer fans closer to the game. Philips, let's make things better. And the new Chevrolets. Ten new cars and trucks in 20 months. An American revolution. It's a big day for Kristen Luckenville, not because it's her fourth international match, but because it's her first international start. She had to be thrilled to be named to the Olympic team. I do wish you could be a fly on the wall when the ones that are making their first Olympic team read the roster and see their name, and they know, you know, to be sensitive to the people that didn't make their roster. So you'd like to be a fly on the wall when they finally let go and, and let it sink in that they made the team. Start the car. horsepower V6, traction control, and sliding rear seats. Chevy Malibu Max, an American revolution. Welcome to the Riata. Just half a mile from downtown and you too could live across from Buffalo Bayou Park. You have free use of our mountain bikes, our 24-hour fitness center, and our sparkling pool. You could come home to hardwoods, granite, ceramic tile, and your own personal touches. 5% down, including all my taxes and my condo fees, starts at $916. Choice Condominiums, City Plaza in the Med Center, and Riata on Allen Parkway. Build your own equity, not your landlord's. It's time to live smarter. Some dealers give away free gas. At Joe Myers Ford, we're giving away a new Ford Focus. That's right, a 2004 Ford Focus with the purchase of an Expedition. Your new Expedition will be great for hauling all your stuff, and your Ford Focus will be great for saving you money at the pump. Joe Myers Ford has 20 Expeditions specially marked. Purchase one of these, and we'll throw in one of these. We have 10 Expeditions available on July 3rd and 10 on July 5th. Buy one and receive a two-year lease on an 04 Focus. Joe Myers Ford, Highway 290 between Senate and Jones. Welcome back to the Coliseum. This is where the NFL's Tennessee Titans play. 73 degrees temperature-wise at kickoff, but some scattered thunderstorms are in the forecast over this new sod. And we're underway with the USA in the white tops of the blue shorts. Canada will be in all red. And that's Switek in goal with the ball, sending it long. We welcome you tonight to our coverage. Prime time here on ESPN. The road to Athens continues. Won't be long now before... The USA is there in Greece. The throw in coming up. Canada will take it. Flipped over to Latham. Mitz. Foudy bumped off the ball there by Christine Latham. They were teammates with San Diego in the WSA. Headed up by Wagner, who also played there. Loose ball in the box, and Hooper knocks it away. Picked up by 11, Julie Foudy with this hard cross, and Wagner missed it. It was there. It may have taken a hop on her, and it goes all the way back towards the halfway line. Let's check out starting lineups for the USA. Kristen Luckerville's first international start. And the U.S. will play in a 4-4-2. Catherine Reddick and Kate Markgraf will anchor the center of the U.S. defense. Joy Fawcett is out nursing her sore back. And in the midfield, Allie Wagner gets a start at that attacking center midfield position. She and her teammates are going to be trying to serve the two front for the U.S. with balls behind the Canadian restraining line. Hammond Wambach is that two front for the United States. Foul on Canada. Wambach limping a little bit. Runs it off. Anytime you play Canada, when these two teams meet especially, expect it to be physical. Ball is played long into the box. 
now taken back off Sinclair. He's a rising Canadian star, and out of play it goes. Canada will have a throw in from the far side. Switek gets a start and goal. We remember her from the last World Cup. And Canada will play in a 4-4-1-1, a little bit of a different formation, but that back line, the story there is experience in Charmaine Hooper teaming up with rookie number four, Zurer. Zurer got the MVP award at the recent U19 World Championship World Cup qualifications. And in the midfield, the flank play of Latham and Lang is going to be so critical as they will be trying to support the one front in Sinclair up top for Canada. Timco will just be in a little bit of a supporting role, but again, they're going to be, the midfield for Canada has to work hard to get into the attack. Long ball played, and Swiatek is there at the edge of the 18. We'd like to thank Bud Light and all of our U.S. soccer sponsors for allowing us to bring you this game without interruption. Here's Foudy again on the right flank. Wambach. 12 goals in her last 12 games. Nearly found Mia Hamm, who's looking for goal number 150 in her brilliant international career. Hamm chasing it down, taken down, no call. Much to the dismay of the crowd. Mia reacted better than the crowd did. JP, you've already talked about how Canada always comes with a physical match. Although they have not qualified for the Olympics, or did not qualify for the Olympics, this is a great match for the U.S. because it's much like a team like Australia, for example, that has made the Olympics. Very physical, and this is going to be some of what they will see, and Charmaine Hooper showed us that. Michael Heinrichs announced the 18. Now she can focus on that group of players and the starters to get them ready for Greece. On the clearance from Mitz, one of the newcomers. Wambach, and that went off Permis. Throw in again for the United States. That's Evan Pellerud. He's won a World Cup before when he coached Norway back in 1995. And actually, they knocked the USA out of that World Cup. The USA had a play, and then they won the third place game back in 95 in Sweden. Way back by Lilly. Picked up there on the left. Christy Rampone working it, staying with it. Look at the room she's getting for herself as she tried to cross it. That one went out of play, but she went all the way up the field. Well, the U.S. is coming out strong from the get-go here, and here's that earlier altercation here in the box with Charmaine Hooper and Mia Hamm, and Hamm goes down. Questionable could have been a penalty kick, possibly, very early in the match. Again, we talked about the physical nature of this Canadian side, and Charmaine Hooper, team captain, she always comes with a physical game. That was a nice run by Rampone down that left side, JP. She's committing herself to getting on the attack, but she has just got to focus on that last serve. Got to bring that ball across. Last time we saw the USA, they played against Japan, and the backs did not go forward until that second half, which got them the tying goal, but in that first half, they were not attacking, so maybe this is a sign of things to come. What's on April's checklist for today? Well, three things. Cohesion from the starters. You talked about finally the team has been named, and then she's trying to get to a starting 11 as soon as she can, but she wants to see 45 minutes from this starting unit very cohesively. Numbers behind Canadians' backs. This might be difficult because Canada plays a bunker defense, but they're going to try and thread balls through with players like Ali Wagner. And then against Japan, if you remember, they did not win the first and second ball. They got a battle all game long, full 90 minutes trying to win the first and second ball. And that'll be tough because Canada plays physical, and they'll be trying as well. This portion of the match brought to you by Phillips. It's chased into the corner. That is Emily Zur, who let it go out. We're in the sixth minute. Canada and the USA are scoreless on this July 4th holiday weekend. We thank you for joining us tonight here on ESPN. Terrence Switek, 23 years old from Calgary, Alberta. She'll send it long. Almost gave that ball away to Wagner. Instead, it's Timko. Wide for Latham. Latham will pull it back. The look was for Matheson. And now the flag goes up. Had late, I thought, but it is on. Kara Lang. She scored two goals in the last World Cup. She's just 17 and part of Canada's present and future. Seventh minute now as the USA play it wide. That one goes through. Marie Eidnault to the nearby University of Tennessee. She clears it up. Tennis for Timko. That's cleared back. Nault again. Headed up. There's that physical challenge on anything in the air. Now the flag goes up again. Second offside call consecutive on Kara Lang. 
two players available, suited up, but not expected to play today. Brandy Chastain to the left, Joy Foster to the right. They've got some injuries. We were told that they would not play today. You're allowed six subs. They're just going to save those two players. Joy with a slight back situation from uh, previous surgery. And Brandy Chastain's foot getting better and better each day. Here's Box. Playing it back. Reddick up the middle. JP, one of the reasons that Heather Mitz has gotten such quality time is because Joy's been recovering from that back surgery. And uh, really quality time this year. She's earned herself a spot on this right side in the in the u.s defense she brings a lot of attacking presence off the right side and and uh, that's what april heinrichs wants to see wants to see her get into the attack but again like we saw rampone do it if they're going to make that commitment to make a 60-yard run and get into the attack they got to pull the ball out so it's a scoring opportunity otherwise it's completely wasted eighth minute swide tech will clear Open up there foudy wagner looking for ham Boxed out on the side by Randy Hermes of Canada. Evan Pellerud won't have six ups to make today. Only has five available on the bench. We were told that you could make up to six for today. That would be the max. And I would think that April Heinrichs will use, if not the full six, fairly close to it. Let's see how the game goes. Here's Mitz. Ends up for grabs. Brought down. And a battle along the sideline. Caroline, very strong. Bounty beater, though, that time. Wagner tried to bring it across. Matheson Hounser brings her down in front of the referee, Kerry Seitz, and the foul is called on Canada. Free kick coming up for the United States. With the ball, Kate Markraft, who leads the team this year in minutes played. She'll go along with it. Headed away by Canada for Latham. She tried to send it. Thought maybe she had some help there, but it goes out of play. Another throw in for the USA. Latham, one of Canada's very good young players. On the left, that's Lily's side. Nolte defends on the wing. Lily beat two, plays it back. Then sent into the box, headed away by Andrea Neal. Mitz comes up, but Neal won that battle. Once again, USA won that in the air. The flag goes up, though, on the U.S. Christine Lilly, 95 international goals, trying to become the fifth player to score 100 goals. Two of her teammates have already done that. Mia Hamm, a present teammate, and, of course, Michelle Akers, a former teammate. Of course, everybody's wondering whether Christine Lilly's going to hang it up along with the rest of her 1991 teammates. Reddick plays it up. That's Lilly's side. It goes, almost went out, stayed in, apparently. On the wing, USA attacks. Inside the box, Wambach. Ham makes a run. That ball's going to be cut back. Stopped. Out for a corner kick. Wambach had the right idea, but the Canadians cut it off. It's a corner. First one. There it is. Look at Abby Wambach working so hard on that left side, and it was interesting because Charmaine Hooper, who's more experienced but not necessarily very experienced on defense, gets fried on that left side. Great work by Wambach. Ham makes a beautiful run, and oh boy, good Canadian defense. And on near post. And a collision there. Switek had run into by Wambach. This portion of the match brought to you by Home Depot. Scoreless in the 11th minute. USA holding Lily. Just got Wambach in the back of the ankle. And then Wambach goes down. Bowdy trying to dribble through it. Comes back. Lily plays it out wider. That's Ham on the ball. Foudy. So they're bringing that down, planned or otherwise. Somebody tries to take it to the byline, knocked out for the second corner kick for the U.S. JPI I already can tell that the U.S. players look a lot more fresh than they did against Japan. A lot more rested. Short corner, USA with possession here. Far side, a couple of nice fakes there. I'm holding. 
Draws two. That one's blocked by Timko. Out it goes for a deep throw in in the 12th minute. Timko, one of five players on this team for Canada to play also for the under 19 squad. They're going to the World Championships in November. Ball played across, knocked away by Zur. And good recovery by Shannon Box, who's getting that reputation as one of the finest, if not the finest, holding midfielders right now in the world. She is amazing. Every time she gets that ball, you can see her head's just on a swivel, and she looks to change the point of the attack at every opportunity. Not only that, but she's a great ball winner. She's going to be one of those players that sets the example for April Heinrichs today in winning that first and second ball. She's a battler. On the right side, Heather Mitz from Cincinnati, Ohio. Right side, going long. Headed forward, Wambach is going to get it herself. Three Canadians come back scrambling. Wambach cutting it to the inside, tackled away by Hermes. And out it goes. Abby found herself almost by herself for a while. There's no other options. Up now for Wambach. USA's leading goal scorer this season, this calendar year. Wambach plays it back. Kate Marcraft. Reddick. Kat Reddick emerges as a starter. Last World Cup when Brandy Chastain was hurt. On the left side, that's Rampone. U.S. looking for some space. Pam try to cut it across. And once again, it's a corner kick. Third one for the United States. Last one, they went with a short corner. Let's see what they do on this one. Of course, the U.S. has some great targets in there. Abby Wambach, Shannon Box, Catherine Reddick, but Canada's defense as well has great size. Box, you were looking at briefly one of the targets. Wambach, another. Played up. Headed across. And then wide of goal. Reddick, that ball was out. Not sure if that was the original plan or not, but it looked pretty good. When that ball's bouncing around in the box, a player like Abby's just going to try and get anything she can on it. Swiatek comes out, really commits to this. See her coming out there, and then, whoa, she doubles back. Catherine Reddick keeping it alive. Nice, nice try there. Bicycle kick by Abby Wambach. Halfway line, Canada trying to play it back. Wambach came back for it and got clipped a bit by Neil Cooper. Looking, that goal was empty. Mia Hamm was around the ball. That couldn't be couldn't be good news for Canada. Here's Mitz. Chased by Sinclair. Box hustles after it. Oh, no give there. But she's down. And that's something you haven't seen. Shannon Box. Very slow to get up. She is normally the aggressor. She was that time, but may have hurt herself, Wendy, in the process of that challenge against Lang. Again, she just gives it her all, all the time. And then that was one of those situations where she was trying hard to change the point of the attack. Lang just came in. Looked like she clipped her as she was sliding, maybe lower abdomen there. If she slides, makes a great, great serve there, and you can see Lang's left leg there follows through into her, her midsection. But you saw Christine Lilly kick that ball as high as she could up into the stands. They don't want to mess around. They know how no. important Shannon Box is to this team. This portion of the match brought to you by Chiquita. Box solid defensively, but also sometimes it's her first pass that helps to spring the attack after she's won a ball for the U.S. Heather Mitz is on it right now in the 16th minute. Scoreless between the USA and Canada. USA has had obviously a lot of the ball possession here. All Canada needs is a chance like this with Sinclair shooting it low and missing the target. But if she's on target, that's how the Canadians can score. One good chance from a very good forward. Still scoreless here. The best in Major League Soccer will square off the 2004 Sierra Mist MLS All-Star Game. It's live on ABC Sports from RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C. 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Hope you'll join us for that one. ABC and ESPN, home of the World Cup. Winning this ball up for Wagner, broke it up. Canada. Neil with a good idea, but that ball needs to be closer to Lang. Knocked away and out of play. Canada will have a throw in deep. It's 
So finally, the Canadians are having some possession here in the offensive third. Hooper's up. Long throw. Looking. There's Luckenville making an easy play. Kristen Luckenville out of Dartmouth. She's from Paoli, Pennsylvania. One of these players who wouldn't even be dreaming about having a shot at this Olympic team if it weren't for the WUSA. Ham shot, but it's right at Swiatek. Swiatek wasn't giving her much to shoot out there. She came out challenged on a bouncing ball back the other way. Markraft back, headed it nicely so that the hands of the goalkeeper could have been used. Nice tackle there by Latham. Kippy, although Canada's in a one front, you can see the commitment by Lang and Latham on the flanks to get up. And uh, as Evan Peller told you when you talked to him before the match, that it's going to look like a three front. And there's no doubt about it. They're pressuring and putting this U.S. defense under pressure. Intended for Timko. Said he wanted three to attack and five to defend pretty much at all times. So either Lang or Latham will probably go forward most of the time. Another foul was called. Free kick coming up for the USA. As we approach 18 minutes gone in the first half. JP, that's going to be an area of the flanks for the U.S. Look at Lillian Foudy out as wide as they can on the counter and try and spring those spaces where they won't have any pressure because Lang and Latham are going to have trouble getting back. I don't think they can run. There's no question they can't run this long. Switek looks for Latham. Missed that ball in the air. Sinclair kept it rolling. Knocked down by Reddick, and then Sinclair took it away. That's intercepted as well. Markraft did a good job there. Kate clears it to the right for Foudy. That's the space I'm talking about, JP. That's going to open up early for the U.S. Foudy looking. Wanted Wombach. Cleared away by Andrea Neal. U.S. getting it back on that left side. Christine Lilly lofting it. Wagner's after it. Knocked out. Last touch apparently by Ali Wagner. Charmaine Hooper was back defending. Hooper's a great story, a tremendous striker for Canada, all-time leader in caps and goals, and now seems to be settling in as a central defender. She's getting older, but also, Wendy, they've got some very good young players as strikers, so they don't need her up there. Right, and it's it's actually amazing uh, that Zur, Emily Zur, number four for Canada, who's just a rookie, in fact, I believe she's getting her first cap. She's only she's going to be 17 years old, and it's good experience for her to be in this back line trying to deal with this U.S. pressure by like getting to play next to Charmaine Hooper. Flag was up, and now Kerry Seitz is apparently acknowledging that. So had they scored there, the U.S.A., that would not have counted. Canadians will restart it. There is Kerry Seitz in charge of this one between two rivals from CONCACAF. Surprisingly, Canada did not qualify for the Olympics. They were favored, but Mexico, you'd have to call that a major upset. So Mexico goes along with the USA to Greece and Canada. Focuses now on their under-19 squad. Tennis for Sinclair comes back for Timko. Lily playing it back. This portion of the match brought to you by Chevrolet. Kate Marcraft. Cutting ball to the outside. Misty Rampone. Getting a little more space as well. An early ball to Lilly who plays it back. Good idea to switch, but that ball was behind Mitz and it allows Canada to settle a little bit defensively. Tended for Ham. Cut off there. Randy Hermes with a clearance. Two players holding on to one another. And that's going to be called on Latham. Mitz is looking. There's some movement up top before she strikes this. Twenty-one minutes gone. USA and Canada scoreless. Here's Ham looking across it, and it's going to go out for a corner kick. Fourth one for the USA. First one from this near side. Lily. Maybe a short corner. We'll see. Or Lily might be just a decoy. Ham is going to strike it with authority. Headed by Wagner. It looked like a planned play, and she was going towards Wombach on the far side. Here's Switek coming out. 
Great opportunity, but a little nuance to point out, JP, is Wagner's got to lift that ball. She can't finish from there, and she hit kind of a driving header. She's got to go ahead and lift it up over that defense, just float it up there to that back post where she had two players. It's got to beat that Canadian defense. They've got great height, and they're very good in the air. But just a little wrinkle that would have made that work out. Wambach lays it back. 23rd minute. USA and Canada scoreless as Hooper tries to play it back to the rookie, Emily Zurer. Won't even turn 17 until July 12th. Bouncing ball out. Belongs to the USA in the 23rd minute. So after the USA pretty much dominated without scoring, the Canadians have somewhat even the playing field. Still, the USA looks more dangerous. Off that challenge. The whistle goes. And it goes against the United States. Free kick coming up, and Charlene Hooper put it back into play. Canadian captain sends it off the left foot. Cleared away and then sent back by Neal. Wanted Lang, a collision there. Off Sinclair, good idea to play it out wide. And then that one just gets away. Well, they've got some dangerous forwards that Canadians do. Again, here's a look at that last attack by Canada, and the U.S. has got to clear this out. Tr trouble clearing it, and then look, it ends up with Sinclair with space out left to Lang, who just flubs her serve there. Looked like she was trying to get it back across, but too dangerous a situation. I think the U.S. is getting a little bit surprised by the fact that those players are coming out of the midfield, but there's no question they've got numbers up. USA out shooting Canada 3-1 to one in the early going. 24th minute from the Coliseum in Nashville, Tennessee. Marcraft. Catwetic up the middle. That's picked off. Latham. Stretched, found Matheson. Long look for Tim Cole. That's blocked here. Sinclair. Christine Sinclair sends it across. That ball had some nice top spin on it, but did not get by. Luckenbill was sure handed on it. One of Luckenbill's greatest qualities is she's a great shot stopper, a shot blocker. Saw a little bit of that there. On this 4th of July holiday weekend, primetime coverage here on ESPN. USA versus Canada as Mia Hamm takes it in deep to the byline. Thought that ball was out. And was it handled in there? I think that ball was out still. Referee's assistant said it was. There was just no whistle. What a brilliant combination by Hamm and Wambach. They work so well together. Looked to me like it was completely out. Completely out. Boy, what an effort by Ham, though. Took an explosive touch end line, just got a little bit away from her. But before that, that one-two with her and Wambach, just absolutely beautiful. Mitz chasing that down right by the USA's bench as the road to Athens continues here tonight. Hope you're enjoying our coverage with Lenny Guevara Palladino. I'm JP Della Camera. No scoring in this one between the Canadians and the United States. USA out shooting Canada. This portion of the match is brought to you by Phillips. Lily will play it wide left. Ramped home once again. Far upfield. Finding some space to the corner area it goes. Locked it up. Intended for a hand, but too much on that one from Wombach. 26th minute. Gold kick coming up for the Canadians. JP on April's checklist, we talked about possession. Having possession behind Canada's defensive line with numbers is one thing April's looking for, but Canada's playing in this bunker defense. That's not going to work. Sometimes they retreat all the way back to the six-yard box. There's a touch for Wagner, Hooper. Strong there, stronger, and won it. But one of the things I think should be on that checklist is focus on the serves across the box. The U.S. has already had a couple of them that have gone over the end line. It's just a waste of an attack. Somewhat dangerous ball back, mitts to Luckenville, but the USA escapes. And in the air, but it was won by Hermes. Here's Foudy on a crowded sideline, picked off by Timko. Back to Hermes. Throw in coming up for the Canadians. Foudy, a veteran of four World Cups, will soon be playing in her third Olympic tournament. Long 
throw in. One by Foudy. USA, though, couldn't control it. Foudy again. Defended by Timko. Wambach. Not a crisp pass at all to Wagner. Needed to be. Erlang. Was it blocked by Foudy? Mia knew she might have been in an upside position there had she received that one. Coming back the other way. Here is Abby Wambach. Strong one to the byline. That ball, I was sure, was out. Didn't call it. You can watch the final round of the Seattle's Western Open tomorrow on ABC. Defending champ Tiger Woods takes on a tough field that includes Davis Love III and VJ Singh. Tune in at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific on ABC Sports Championship Television. Foudy goes long. Switek backs up. And they have a chance at this against the rookie Zur. The legs get together. They both go down. And Ham's going to get called. I think Ham thought that just as easily could have could have been against Zur. Saw some good speed there out of Zur, but I noticed a bit of a, a hesitation on him. I think she initially thought, oh, there you go. Yeah, definitely tangled up. I think that could have been called against Zur. <laughs> She's trying to walk it off there. Ended up getting the worst of it. But I saw a bit of a hesitation between Wambach and Ham from up here, JP. And I, obviously, I think Ham can beat Zur in that foot race, but she just hesitated thinking Wambach was going to go in on that for that serve. Box breaks that play up, leaves it off. Foudy towards Mitz. Mark Kraft. USA in a 4-4-2 formation. One of two formations that you'll probably see mostly at the Olympics, although they can go into others. And they can offer a lot of variation off of these formations as well. Three different looks on each. Of course, the other formation would be a 4-3-3, and with Parlo on the bench, she adds a great weapon up top. U.S. can definitely play in a three-front if she's on her game. Canadians chase, win the ball. Lang looks. Good idea on that cross. Latham mistimed it, and it goes the other way instead of going forward. Here's Matheson collecting. Nolte. Up for grabs, Luckenville strong in the air, and she had to be because Neal and Sinclair were both there. 30th minute, USA and Canada remain scoreless. Another challenge at the halfway line from Matheson. Ham back on the ball. Oh, Lily just got undercut. That hurts. Nault. Fifth Canadian foul. Lily going up for it. Good call, JP. Definitely undercut. That one hurt my Everybody back. Knocked. I'm not sure about Lily's. But you know, Lily has had some back trouble in the past, so it's good to see her getting up without a limp. Julie Foudy playing it up. Mitz. Blocked by Hooper. And Hooper clears. This portion of the match brought to you by Gatorade. It is scoreless here in Nashville. 31st minute. USA and Canada. This 4th of July weekend. Wagner looking, trying to get it through. The Canadians are back to clear. Sinclair, very strong. Plays it back to Lang. Yes. Timko with a run from deep, but that ball's too far. Luckenville is able to clear. Cooper. Get up there, the foul is called on the Canadians. They've got a half a dozen. Coming back, it's Ham. Flicking it. Wambach is in. Saved by Swiatek. That's a beauty. One of the ways you can beat a bunker defense is quick combinational play. And we've seen it twice today. Absolutely brilliant play by Ham and Wambach. Again, this another quick one-two. You see the, those serves are only like five, ten yards apart, JP, and that's that's a, a good way to beat this Canadian defense. Wambach took it down beautifully, but Swiatek came up huge with a save. Those two combine well. They played together with the Washington Freedom for a couple of years in the WSA, and now obviously with the USA national team the past couple of seasons. 
Well, Ham, they, Ham has made Wambach better. They have incredible respect for each other, JP, because as you said, Ham has made Wambach better. Wambach has really latched on to just learning as much as she can from Ham. But let me tell you, Ham has got a great deal of respect for Wambach. She says she's the future of this. As one, she could be possibly developing into the next leader for this U.S. squad. That's a huge statement. She feels very good the day that she retires because she knows that Wambach is one of the young players that could take over the reins. Body will switch. That is Ham on the ball. Mia with the look up. Had Wambach in her sights, but the Canadians had that ball in their sights as Matheson clears it. Latham to the right. Up for Sinclair. Markraft with her, but Sinclair is able to get it free to Timko. Then she joins in the attack. Sinclair, good effort there. She tries to cross it off Walking Bill and then the post. And she grabs it. But you see the danger of Sinclair after winning the ball, continuing her run and becoming a factor. Luckenbill is able to clear. Cooper in the air. Off Latham. Box. Rampone will settle. Approaching 33 minutes gone here in this first half. Wagner glides it over. Heather Mitz at the halfway line. Keeps it rolling. Wagner looks. Couldn't link up there with Lily. Broken up by Lang. Lang on the turn. She made her international debut at age 15. Lang from Sinclair. Sent up. And this one's going to go out of play. Throw in for the Canadians. Christy Rambo a part of the 2000 Olympic team where she started. Back on the Olympic squad again for 2004. On the right side, Timko tries to get around. Ball's going to go out for a goal kick. Christine Sinclair with three shots on goal today. Although she's playing in a one front, don't let it fool you because she's creating all kinds of opportunities and her midfield is getting in great support. I would bet that that was probably a cross, JP, but hey, it's dangerous. And Luckenville had to get back and make a big save. She's 21 years old, plays at the University of Portland. We remember her as a teenager, touted as the future of Canada, but right now, She's the most dangerous player, even at a young age. We've got a free kick coming up here for the United States versus Canada. Seventh Canadian foul. In the 35th minute, USA will have this free kick. From around 40 yards or so out. Ham floats it up. Wambach, one header, and it's cleared near side. That's Mitz. Wambach using his strength, knocked out for a corner kick. Tackled out by Zura. Fifth corner kick for the USA. And again, it'll be on this near side. Last time we saw a nice set piece that just didn't work because of the ending execution of it. We'll see what they go with this time. Lily will take it, not him. And this will be an in-swinger from Lily, so she's probably going to try and dump it in there into the mix, as opposed to finding Wagner up top. Lily drives it. Far post. Not a down once, then Hooper. And Hooper is fouled by Foudy on the far side. This portion of the match brought to you by Chevrolet. April Heinrichs may be working on her checklist. What can you say about it? Well, I would say the one thing is uh, I do like some of the things from the starting unit. So a bit of cohesion there. The U.S. is not having success getting behind Canada's back line because they're playing such a bunker. Those, those spaces are not there behind a restraining line. Again, sometimes they go back all the way to, uh, you know, the six, they come back to the six-yard box defensively. And I would say it's about 50-50 as far as battling for the first and second balls. Canada's going after it. But I think at some point the fitness for this U.S. squad is going to carry them through. Hooper checking back. Canada's only had one practice together since they played yeah. and got upset against Mexico. That was in March. They just trained yesterday. That, that's been it. On the far side, USA, the look was for Ham, and that's going to be cleared away. 
Got it on it. Easy. And that one goes out of play. Next week on ESPN2, note the special time Eastern as Radio Shack presents MLS Soccer Saturday at 4 Eastern. The defending champs, San Jose Earthquakes, heading east to take on the Metro Stars next Saturday afternoon, 4 Eastern on ESPN2. For more information, log on to ESPNSoccerNet.com. Ball cut back. Reddick advances, 38th minute. Foudy gets it up. Here's Ham looking, shooting, but it's blocked. Ham on the chase. Here's the cross towards Walbach, and Switek is there. Ham is down at the end of that. I don't think she ever saw where that cross actually went. Halfway line, Lily won it. Wagner takes the look up. Loft it over. Wallback chips. She might have rushed that a little bit, but still that net was open. And Abby Wallback, as we mentioned, so red hot as a goal scorer with 12 goals in her last 12 games. That could have been 13 and 13. Well, I would say that the next thing that April needs to work on with her front runners is this type of opportunity. Ham missed one earlier by hitting it right at Switek. Now Wallback hits it over the top. Got to do a better job of finding that net, which is wide open. They just have to lift it over that onrushing goalkeeper. Ham heads it forward. Wagner keeps it going to Wambach. Canada wins it to Timko. 39th minute. USA and Canada remain scoreless. Left side for Lang. And a missed touch for the teenager. The youngest Canadian to ever score a goal. The Lily Pass finds Box. Wambach on the ball with three shots so far today, matching that of Sinclair. For Canada. Here's Foudy trying to break down the defense. Waits for some help. Here it comes. But the ball was too far for the outstretched leg of Christine Lilly. Fortieth minute now with Canada. On this throw-in, Lang looking, releases for Sinclair. Markraft picks up the speed. Good ball back for Luckenville, but now the pressure's on. Luckenville got it away from Latham. Ham off Lombok's foot. Back to goal, Switek. Here's Lilly. Holds back for Shannon Box. Across the way to Christy Rampone. Wambach, back for Box. Takes the look up, see she has room. Now, looks to the side, but it's over Christine Lilly, who has now drifted over to this right side with the USA looking for space. Normally we find Lilly on that left side. She and Foudy have just switched sides here. I would expect that they'll switch back. Lilly's much more naturally a left-sided player. Oh, yeah. Reddick. Now we're at the point where neither team wants to give one up. Last five minutes of the first half. A goal here could be huge for whoever does get it. One is scored before halftime. Lilly. Broken up. Mitz. Box. Wagner. Some nice one touches and then the last one failed. Sunday night, ESPN and ESPN 2 have two Major League Baseball games coming up. First on ESPN, White Sox and Cubs. That's also available on ESPN HD. And coming up at halftime, we'll remember our 1999 World Cup team. Rob Stone has a feature with that. Some upcoming U.S. soccer events in the first half. Recap as Lang sends this one long. Luckenville will put it back into play. Scoreless here as we hit 41 minutes gone. Temperature might have said 73 at the start, but it's a very humid night here in Nashville. And you were talking about conditioning. No question USA would be in better condition than a team that has just practiced the one time. We may see some note of that in the second half. Lombach is down again in that collision with Zurer. For 
girl that's not going to be 17 for another week or so, Zura, is very physical. MVP of the last CONCACAF Olympic tournament for under 19s. Here's a look at that last battle there. Wambach actually had two players on her, but it was Zur who went up like well, Abby got knocked in the head a bit, got a got a bit dazed, which is really unusual. With Abby's size, she usually wins that physical battle, but I agree with you, JP. It's amazing coming from a 16-year-old Zur. She's tough. Emily Zur is on the ball now. 43rd minute. Goes long. A box. Wagner chases Matheson. Ball is free. Zur up for Lang. Sinclair to Lang. Sinclair becoming more active here. As Lang tried to go across, box fouled her. Free kick Canada. Lang playing as a midfielder. We saw her playing closer to goal in the last World Cup. And with the under-19 team, if you can believe this, she has played as a stopper. Showing her versatility for sure, but I can tell you she's not going to have the fitness level to run off this flank. And if the U.S. wants to expose it, they need to get the ball into that space quickly on the counterattack. Free kick for Canada. Herma sends it up. Not it down. Sinclair fires. It was deflected. The Canadians say handball. At least that's what the signal appeared to be from them because they do have the corner kick. That was close. The deflection could have caused the goal as well as the initial shot from Sinclair. We're on this way. We win this way. 44th minute. Luck and Bill up. It's down. Sinclair couldn't handle it. If she had, she may have had a goal. Right up on the right side for half. Sinclair nearly had a great chance there right at the very end. A favorable bounce. Now the flag goes up. And the offside call is on Canada. No matter where Sinclair is on the field, she's dangerous. Look at her taking this shot here. Oh, great half chance there. And Shannon Box puts her both arms up to protect her face, it looked like. Take a look from the Phillips goal cam. Here's Sinclair ripping a shot there. Ooh, oh yeah, Shannon Box had her arms up. That could have been called that way with the arms moving up as a penalty kick. Shots are even at five. One minute of stoppage time will be added. Blocked by Timko. Brought down Latham. Pushed down towards Box. Chased by Matheson. Canada and the USA. Scoreless first half. Unless somebody can produce something in stoppage time, and we're a few seconds away from Matt. Rampone on the left. Keep it. Offside flag is up on Mia Hamm. That's a few times tonight that the USA have not timed their runs have been called for the offside. Fourth time this evening. We're in stoppage time right now. Mia Hamm still in search of goal number 150. She's got 149 plus 132 assists, nearly an assist to goal ratio which is incredible <laughs> halfway line on a bounce or two that seemed to be handled by Wambach Lily out for half cutting looking up for Wambach couldn't get there Matheson bringing it down sends it wide right side Sinclair didn't want to lose it there Lily gets possession back Canada wants to get into that locker room level here at halftime. No question, that's the position they want to be in. That's a victory for Canada going in tied at halftime. Up in the air, Zor. And that's going to do it. So the Canadians will do that. So pretty physical first half of play between the USA and the Canadians. But after 45 minutes, this one is scoreless. Coming up at halftime, a special look at the 1999 Women's World Cup champions. Rob Stone has a feature. Seriously, 
thinking that I may not be able to physically do the penalty kick. Thank God it turned out differently. <laughs> you can create fireworks with paint at America's first choice for paint tools and techniques, the Home Depot. Discover our revolutionary color solution center, a complete resource for painting ideas, where you can mix and match from the largest color palette in America. Only the Home Depot has it. Now through July 5th, get $5 off one gallon cans of quality bear and Glidden Evermore paint by mail-in rebate. Vibrant colors, brilliant solutions, one place, the Home Depot. You can do it, we can is one crash to change an entire market. After three years and crowds of competitors, the BMW X5 is still the best SUV ever tested. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. How far does your internet connection reach? With Roadrunner Speed Zone, you might be surprised where you can get online. How about while you're waiting for your car? From your PDA on the road? You bet. Poolside at your apartment complex? Oh yeah. So if you want wireless broadband access away from home, log on to Roadrunner Speed Zone. It's way faster than the average hotspot, and you don't have to be a Roadrunner customer to use it. Speed Zone is fast, simple, and secure. Experience Wi-Fi with Roadrunner Speed Zone, your virtual wireless broadband connection. Car wash. Who knows, maybe some future Olympians in the crowd tonight in Nashville, Tennessee. That's where the road to Athens continues. The USA battling Canada. It is scoreless after 45 minutes of play as the USA tries to capture Olympic gold in Athens in November. They'd like to recapture some of the magic that we saw back in the 1999 World Cup with a team that captured the heart of this country. <laughs> After playing for two hours in 105 degree heat, the 1999 Women's World Cup would be determined by 10 penalty kicks in front of the largest crowd to ever watch a women's sporting event. The penalty kicks were just amazing and stuff. We were all tired. I mean, the Chinese team was tired. We were tired. But you could see the life come back into us. I was scared, and I was so happy that it was those five, the key veteran players on our team, that sank it and put them in. So here's Carla Overbeck. Carla, when she hit hers, I mean, her celebration was just, she exploded with the with the fans, and it was amazing. The walk from midfield to the PK spot is the longest <laughs> walk jog that you'll ever take. And then just to make it was just huge relief. The turning point came when Brianna Scurry stopped a Lu Ying penalty kick, giving the U.S. team the advantage. I remember being incredibly pumped up, and I mean, I've seen pictures and the video of it, and that's how I remember it. When I was third, and it was right after Brianna had just made the save, so the place was going nuts. And all that was going through my head was to get to the penalty spot and stick with my game plan, which was to go to the right of the keeper where she was diving. Mia Hamm with a chance to give her team the lead. I don't remember. I mean, I walked up, and all I thought about was 
just make a smooth stroke. As Brandy stepped up, you know, if she misses, I go in as number six. So I'm like, please, I'll start going to church. <laughs> just make this. Let's end it now. It was incredibly quiet. And the moment itself, once the whistle blew, though it happened very quickly, I could see it going frame by frame. And it was just like this unbelievable explosion, just like lights and color and noise, and then the team was there, and it happened so fast. It, it was amazing. You couldn't have made a better ending. The other storybook. There are so many wonderful things that happened during that World Cup that should never be forgotten. That was kind of like the cherry on top of the, the sundae. Boy, that was a great flashback. You and I were there. We had the pleasure of calling that game. What do you remember the most? Well, I remember the, the lack of sound before Brandy's kick, and you could hear a pin drop, and then just almost being bowled over by the excitement of the crowd, and the, the reverberation of the noise was amazing. And then you looked down, and you could hardly see the field because of the graffiti everywhere. It ended up being very surreal at the end of the day at the Rose Bowl. What a great memory that was back to the 1999 Women's World Cup team. But right now, their hearts are set. On Olympic gold, the road to Athens continues from Nashville. We'll take a look at the soccer schedules for the U.S. men and women when we come back to Nashville. Pipes, half court, center court, center field, rec center, rec league, major league, and last. Super Bowl, far bowl, windstorm, windmill, sweat chambers, and last. Turf, grass, mud, sand, schoolyard, backyard, the garden, the swamp, the deck, the men, the pit, the park, the lake, the jake, the bar, bean dome, sky dome, and last. Venice, truckers, old school, new school, home, Gatorade. Tested in labs, proven everywhere. Start the car. <laughs> Two hundred horsepower V six, traction control, and sliding rear seats. Chevy Malibu Max, an American revolution. You can kick off that summer project now and put off paying for it at the Home Depot. The one place with all the tools, supplies, and know-how for any project this summer. Now through July 5th, get no payments, no interest for 12 months on purchases of $2.99 or more store-wide with your Home Depot or Expo consumer credit card. Also right now, get free delivery on appliances. Make the most of your summer and your summer projects. You can only at the Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. Helen, that Frenchman's out there again. Toothbrush brand is the most used and recommended by dental professionals. Sonicare Elite by Philips with patented Sonic technology and bristle tips that move three times faster than all other leading power toothbrushes for a deep cleaning experience unlike any other. Sonicare Elite removes stains and reverses gingivitis for whiter teeth and healthier gums, guaranteed. Stop brushing. Start Sonicare. ESPN's presentation of U.S. Soccer is brought to you by the new Chevrolets. Ten new cars and trucks in 20 months. An American revolution. 
Phillips. Healthcare, lifestyle, and technology products that bring soccer fans closer to the game. Phillips, let's make things better. And Bud Light, fresh, smooth, real. It's all here. Halftime in Nashville, scoreless between the United States and Canada. Game four of six games that the USA women will play before they head to Athens. Let's check out the upcoming schedule. Two more games to be played. They will head to Minnesota July 21st on ESPN2, taking on Australia, who they'll meet in the first round. And then the send-off game will be in the fairly new stadium. It's only two years old in East Hartford, Connecticut, to take on China, also on ESPN2. As for the men, they'll be pretty active, too. A friendly July 11th versus Poland in Chicago, part of an MLS doubleheader on ESPN2. August 18th, the counts in World Cup qualifiers. Some of these guys will be playing in the upcoming MLS All-Star game, too. Hey, Julie Foudy here, midfielder for the U.S. Olympic soccer team. Here's your chance to watch the best of Major League Soccer. Our nation's capital is the site for the 2004 Sierra Mist MLS All-Star Game as the best from the West meet the stars from the East. ABC Sports will have it all live Saturday, July 31st, beginning at 2 Eastern. ABC and ESPN, home of the World Cup. And at that game, they'll also be honoring those from the 1994 World Cup team as well. So join us for that All-Star Game. We're coming back with the second half from Nashville. frothy coffee layer for a one-of-a-kind sensation Senseo, coffee that feels as good as it tastes The X Factor You know it's a part of the game Is it a part of you? Introducing new Gatorade X Factor. Two great flavors fused together under one cap. I don't know what happened, man. Next thing I know, I'm in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice. Guys, guys, guys. guys. Two hotties, 10 o'clock. That's 1 o'clock. Okay, now that's 9 o'clock. Gentlemen, that's four o'clock. There. Over there. Damn! See you. Real smooth. My watch, okay? The Tuesday night poker game is back. And this time, it's for five million bucks. Passing out hundred dollar bills on in this town. Never gonna be the same. An incredible knockout blow. The highest stakes, the world's best players, and the unrivaled coverage of ESPN. The 2004 World Series of Poker. All new episodes begin Tuesday. It's the perfect sports activity vehicle for whatever sport you're into. versatile BMW X3. After one drive, it's the easiest decision you'll ever make. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. How far does your internet connection reach? With Roadrunner Speed Zone, you might be surprised where you can get online. How about while you're waiting for your car? From your PDA on the road? You bet. Poolside at your apartment complex? Oh yeah. So if you want wireless broadband access away from home, Log on to Roadrunner Speed Zone. It's way faster than the average hotspot, and you don't have to be a Roadrunner customer to use it. Speed Zone is fast, simple, and secure. Experience Wi Fi with Roadrunner Speed Zone, your virtual wireless broadband connection. I'm not saying I'm retiring. I'm not quite done yet. Um, maybe I'll be done October, who knows? But right now, you know, I'm not done ready to hang up the shoes. And, um, Hopefully there's still some more years in me, but I don't know. It's been it's been long, but it's still enjoyable, so we'll see what happens. Well, 
that sounds like good news to me. A lot of people speculating who would retire after the Olympics, and a lot of people said Chrissy Lilly might be the only one still playing. Well, in fact, she's got some years left in her legs, I believe, but I think it'll be tough for her to continue on without her best buddies that have been, she, that have been there with her since the very beginning. Scoreless first half, but we do have some highlights for you in the opening 45 minutes of play. And Canada did a good job shutting down Ham up top. Luckinville came up big with some saves. We'll take a look at some of the opportunities. Here's Ham in the first half, just needs to lift it a little bit more over Swiatek. And then when she's up with pressure in the back, she's got one and two defenders on her at all times. She did combine well with Wambach some, but here's oh, the dangerous Sinclair. Luckinville had to come up with two saves. Both of those were opportunities created by Sinclair. The U.S. needs to keep an eye on her. Canadians have made one change in their lineup to start the second half of play as the ball is played up and Christy Rampone will take it. Looks like Isabel Morneau has come on to play on the left side of the defense. That's Kara Lang. The young star, there's Isabel Morneau. Star in the last World Cup, playing as a left back, so Marie-Yves Nault has come out. Lang just went up on the near side. That had to be, I would have thought, for a foul more than any offside there. That's the only switch. Only four subs left for Canada because they only brought five players available for substitute duty. USA have a much deeper bench. Six subs allowed for today's match. Here's Lily. Broke it up. Canada and the U.S. play at a pretty even. First half of play, USA dominated in the early going. The Canadians were able to level it off somewhat, but neither team could score. Yeah, but both teams had great chances, two great chances by both teams. But I do think that fatigue is going to become a factor in this second half for Canada. The U.S. just needs to run them as much as they can, maybe go to some fresh legs off the bench. Wambach to Wagner, nice ball back. Fox cracks it! Oh, that was looking good off the right foot, but... The USA that time looked very dangerous, and the ball played back to Shannon Box. Look at this ball to Box. She could strike it from there, and you can see it was right about the right height, just about a foot wide of that right post. That's a good chance there. The U.S. can look for that as well. They didn't really look for that in the first half, but if Shannon Box making, is making that run. She can crack it. We'd like to thank Phillips and all of our U.S. soccer sponsors for allowing us to bring you this game without interruption. Kristen Luckenbill, a couple of saves in that first half. This is her international debut. The backup goalkeeper to Brianna Scurry. Long ball played, brought down. Wagner. Fox. Keeps it moving. Right sideline. Mitz across. Wambach in the air. That one's cleared away. Matheson. A blind pass there that was picked off. Lily has support. Rampone looks, floats that one up. Ham was open there. That one might have been rushed. One of the ways that the U.S. can mix it up in the second half is to find Box at the top of the box. And that's a great look from our Phillips goal cam. Mark Graff will get it. So the U.S.A. off to a pretty good start attack-wise here in the second half of play. Trying to spread the ball around a little bit more. More activity. Here's Box. Looking. Got it down there by Morneau to Neal. Morneau holds. Tennis for Sinclair. Back for Neal. Second Canadian to reach 100 caps. She got that last game against Costa Rica. Canada back for it. They'll play it back to Swiatek. Down, Reddick very aggressive there. Wagner couldn't get to it. Shannon Box settles. Wagner. Lily's pass. Christy Rampone. Pushing it back. Lily again for Box. Canada have just about everybody back. Here's Wambach. Trying to push it ahead. That's why that came out late, but Hooper did a good job in screening the onrushing Wambach. Charmaine very physical whether she's playing as a striker or as a central defender. Up for grabs, Lily. Wagner has some help. Plays it up. Try to 
sent Wambach through, but Hooper was right there. That was a difficult pass to make. Clearance from Switek. Tinko lost it there. Up the middle, Wagner. Good early ball, but a bit too far for Wambach. And Switek has it at the edge of the box. But that quick play that you were talking about before can break down the defense. Well, Wagner's starting to thread some balls through there. I thought in the first half she struggled a bit because she had so much pressure around her. Canada, again, is playing a bunker defense. Ham takes over. Here's Mia looking for it. Just missing goal, number 150. The ball, though, apparently was deflected slightly. Corner kick. Look at Ham taking this ball. Long, aggressive touch. Looks up. Mixes it up. That's what I love about it. They just waved it off. No corner. I didn't see a deflection, but the initial signal was for a corner. Mia says it was deflected. I mean, it didn't miss by much. 51st minute. In the air, the Canadians getting to that. This portion of the match brought to you by Gatorade. Lang trying to get through. And the foul is going to be called on Lang. You know, when you make it to the international level, even if you're a teenager, I guess you've got to be very aggressive to even earn a spot. Lang has proven that with Canada. One thing I'm noticing from up here, JP, is it looks like Sinclair and Lang have maybe switched positions. Or, I'm sorry, Latham and Sinclair. Sinclair's more on that right side, which makes makes some sense. Latham was, was definitely tiring running that flank all first half. Matheson will clear it out. Okay, Marcraft going long over the top. Wagner, nice cut. Left foots it across as a pass. Lilly brings it down. Right footer going for the near post. Switek bobbled it, but now recovers. Good imagination. And Wagner seems to be more of the free player here since the second half began. Done a much better job playmaking in the beginning of the second half. Out of play it goes. It'll be a throw-in coming up. Is Christine Latham. We see if Canada, they've been playing back for a good portion of the game. We'll see how they continue, or if they continue, the longer this game goes, especially with this score. Ham. Back for Wagner. Lilly. Quick ball. Wambach facing goal. Left sideline. Defended by Hermes. Wambach with a look up. Wagner holds. Nice cut. Wagner drills it, but it's high. What a good move, though, to free herself up for a shot off the left foot. I like this wrinkle. We've seen three shots by the U.S. at the top of the box. That seems to be working for him. Just need to get him on the face. Look at Wagner buying herself a little bit of time there. Just leans back on her shot. But I like this wrinkle as opposed to him trying to just thread the ball through the Canadian defense, trying to get behind their restraining line, which is one of April Heinrichs checklist points. Got a Canadian player down. Somewhat close to the halfway line as the ball is played up. It's Andrea Neal who lost the boot in the process. The ball is played back to Luckenville. Neal is still down. Trying to lace it up. Ball played through by Box to Wagner. On a bounce. Swiatek gets there before Mia Hamm does. Neal is up and apparently okay. She looked injured, but bounced back up after she laced the boot back. That is Neal, heading it forward to Latham. The ball gets through and Luckenville will call for it. There's Mitz. And lost out by Foudy. April Heinrich looking on. Wendy, let's take another look at the checklist. How's it going here? Again, I still like the cohesion, but that's the only one that I think they've sorted out. The 50-50 balls, again, I think it's 50-50 it's as far as Canada winning half of them and the U.S. winning half. And um, I think that they need to recognize the fact that Canada's back line is dropping back so much. Maybe a player like Ham or Wombat checks into that space that they're leaving in front of them as opposed to trying to serve those balls. Wagner's trying to thread them through there, but Switek's coming out. It's too deep a serve. Fifty-fifth minute, USA and Canada, scoreless. 
Long ball from Marcraft. Wambach, nice idea, but too much on that header. Had it stayed in play, Lily had the flank. Randy Hermes slipping toward the side for Canada. Should take the throw in. You can hear Ava Heinrich saying she wanted her team to make one more pass, be a little bit more patient on these attacks. Canada with another throw in. Again, it's Hermes. This is a 53rd international match. Broken up by Rampone. Long intended for late. The USA won that. It was Rampone to box. She'll play it back safely. Markraft. Foudy. She'll really play it forward. Now back to box from Wagner. Rampone. Now Lily. Tried to go inside. Wombach started to go outside, and that ball was cleared away by Canada. Out for a throw in. This portion of the match brought to you by Bud Light. Throw in. Wombach was going to take it, but instead, Mia Hamm will come over. Wombach wants to turn and face, and almost got a corner kick, and now she will for the U.S. Now this should be the seventh one for the United States. And he's going to take it. Strikes it hard and well. Swiatek got turned around there. The ball's going to go out for another corner on the far side. And now Lily's going to go over to take this. Tech in goal. Knows who the U.S. threats are here. That's Mitz in front of her. Fox is inside too, trying to cause some havoc. Lily off the left foot. Wombach got up there but couldn't get to it. Ham collects. And that one spins away and out for a goal kick. USA men will be back in action. Chicago is the venue. And the USA will be taking on the national team of Poland July 11th, 6.55 Eastern Time on ESPN2. Rob Stone and Marcelo Balboa will be along for the call of that one. That's the next U.S. soccer telecast. Matheson plays it long. Comes back to Luckenville. Kristen Luckenville gave that one away. That is Timko. Good ball. Sinclair is going to get it at the byline, and she will get a corner kick for Canada. Only the second. Subs are up, including Brian Ascuri. Everybody up for the USA. And if they make a change, normally you think about that 60th minute. Here's Timko across. Well, that one was knocked down and then cleared not out. Lang, a back heel by Hooper. Lang had a chance to actually score if she struck it well from outside the box, and so did Hooper right there. The U.S. should never have found themselves defending a corner kick. Luckenville's got to get that ball high and wide if she's going to use her feet to clear it out. Remember, we saw it come right to the foot of that Canadian player who... 16, Timko, who took it in for that chance. Lily running at the defense. A couple of cuts, couple more. Madison wins it. Christine Sinclair. Tenant for Latham. She was slowed down by Kat Reddick. Kate Marcraft. Well, a hard challenge from Neal. Cleared away by the U.S. to Wagner. Foudy. Coming through. Wambach. Right down the middle, looking for Ali Wagner. Lindsay Tarpley, first sub up. And Christine Lilly's number is up, so she is coming out. 
That doesn't happen very often at all. So, Lindsay Tarpley will come in for Christine Lilly. April Heinrich said she wanted to get a minimum of 45 minutes, obviously, in there for the starters. Tarpley brings a lot of versatility to this U.S. squad. She can play in the midfield and she can play up top and has scored a number of goals already this year. This is Tarpley. Second on the team this year in goal scored. Seven for Ham. A couple of cups. Here's another. Ham plays it over. And look this for Walmart. Ali Wagner looks for it, can't get to it. Latham right now, a lone striker, fouled by Box. This portion of the match brought to you by Chevrolet. 61st minute, still a scoreless one here. This team has made the one change. I mean, Hooper put it in a play. Up in the air, the Canadians look for it there. Couldn't get through. Heather Mitz did a good job defending in the box. Halfway line, gathered in. Wagner will head upfield. Allie Wagner on the attack, looking for Wombach. Knocked down, and Charmaine Hooper gets to it. USA looking to get it right back. Foudy. To Wagner, holding, back to box. Wagner looked down, didn't see that. We've got April Heinrich, the head coach, on with us. April, your thoughts in the first 61-plus minutes now of play? Um, really pleased with our team's ability to get behind Canada and the possession that we've talked about. Um, we're tracking how many times we got behind them. Mia herself made 14 runs, and we played the ball two or 14 times. Abby got behind, Ali Wagner got in once, uh, Christine got in once, and, and Julie did. So one of our goals is to find ways to get behind teams. Uh, even though you're in a 4-4-2, can you be dangerous with runs at the restraining line? Pretty happy with that. April, what, talk about the cohesion you saw from your starting unit. Are you pretty pleased with that as well? Yeah, you know, it is. we played so well in the first half, it is hard to sustain that for 90 minutes. And so uh, right now we like what we see from the, the starting group for 45 minutes. Uh, we're going to probably make some changes here and uh, just make sure we're still investing in the other players. April Alley Wagner getting much more of the ball, looking more dangerous in the second half. Is that by design or just the way the game is going here in the second half? Uh, you know, we played behind Canada so much, they've dropped off now. And so there's a pocket or a seam in front of their back four that Alley's going to play make in. Um, so, you know, that's her natural. She likes sitting in there. She likes playmaking in there for us. There's a quick chance inside. And those wide and Swiatek. Besides making some subs, April, what else can we look forward to the rest of the way in this game here? Well, I think we can all look forward to some finishing. <laughs> uh, you know, we've had our chances, and um, I think we've got behind them enough. We, we deserve the win, and we deserve the win in a big fashion. Thank you, April. April Heinrichs, head coach, USA Women's National Team. So we'll see how the USA does finish here. Heading into the 63rd minute. Lombok. Hooper. Back to goal. Switek. That could have been dangerous. Headed up by Marcraft. That was an aggressive play by Kate to the right side. Ham. Held up by Morneau. Some cover is coming. The legs get tangled up. Ham draws the foul that time on Morneau. Free kick USA. Nine fouls in Canada. look of intensity right there. Now the referee's whistle. Ham will strike it across. Headed by Foudy over. Ham delivered the ball there to Foudy. But the header was off. Kick coming up for Switek. So a bunch of 
subs up for the United States. Abel Heinrich said should be making some more changes here. Is Wambach bringing it down? Nice cut on Hooper. Wambach with a low shot. She went for that near post. Close, but not close enough. Again, I like how the U.S. is mixing it up and taking some shots from out here because this Canadian defense is dropping so deep back into their own goal mouth. Good chance there, but far post was the place that she needed to hit that ball. And Timko fouls Tarpley. She wants a quick restart, but won't get it. Free kick coming up for the U.S. Rampone the box. Back to Marcraft. 65th minute, scoreless, box. USA getting more room here to at least play with the ball as Canada has dropped back. But finishing is what it's all about. So far, the USA hasn't been able to do that. This portion of the match brought to you by Phillips. Hooper, oh, that's a hard foul. She gets it, she gets it. Wambach was fouled. Free kick here, probably from the most dangerous spot they've had a free kick in tonight not probably this is about 23 yards away Mia Hamm off to the side that's who Switek has got to be thinking about Wagner's back as well Hamm can finish from here five in the wall a sixth may join here's Mia look at just why they've got around the wall but went wide of Switek this is a tough place to give up a foul, but it worked out all right for the Canadian defense, but she's got a nice bend on it there, trying to tuck it inside that right post. Obviously, she's done that before and has connected on it. Always a threat on those free kicks that close. Hammond and Wambach each have four shots now for the USA. Here's Tarpley. Lindsay cuts across. Tarpley to the right. Cloudy brings it down. Captain looks off the left foot and hit Wambach. Cloudy stays with it inside the 18. Sinclair defends. And it's played it across, knotted down by Matheson. That was a good play to Timko to get possession and clear it. Latham lays it off. Mitz gets it back for the United States. Shannon Box at the halfway line, 67th minute. Scoreless match from Nashville. Box and Aaron pass, but she'll get it back. Nice step over to get control on the left foot. Wombach to Tarpley. Good idea, but not far enough. She was looking for Ham. Morneau heads it over. Mitz plays it back to Marcraft. Again, JP, we should remember what the U.S. had success in in the first half was that tight combinational play. Ham and Wombach getting each other in in the first half. We haven't seen much of that. We've seen them mixing up. Another way you can beat a bunker defense, defense is shooting from out, out wide, or out, long range shooting, I should say. And they've done that a couple times, mixed it up, but again, just having trouble getting the ball in the face. This Canadian team, 10 of them, or nine of them have dropped back into the space. Wombach looks to get it off a deflection. And touched out. And we're just waiting to see what they're going to call it. It's a gold kick. It should be a gold kick from Switek. Lindsay Tarpley, one of 18 chosen for the squad. We asked her how she reacted when she got the news. The first person I called after I found out about the roster was my mom. Um, I called and she was kind of ready for either situation, if I made the roster or if I didn't. And once I told her, she kind of, my mom kind of went, you did? You made it? You made it? And then she started crying and I started crying. It was a very emotional time and I'll definitely never forget that. It's great to hear from young Lindsay Tarpley, one of the players that you would think was a bubble player, like a few players were. She was certainly not a lock when to make this team yep. at a young age, but definitely a competitor for one of the spots. But no question, the uh, promising future. We saw her score that golden goal when the U19 US team won the first world championship. We're going to see some subs. Cindy Parlow's up. She is from Memphis, Tennessee. And Heather O'Reilly, as Abby Wambach, will come out. Cindy Parlow will replace her. And Julie Foudy is coming out for Heather O'Reilly.
Tyler O'Reilly. The youngest player on the Olympic team. It's 19. A couple Comes of adjustments. Off. Mia, sorry, Dippy. Mia is dropping back to that right midfield spot. And Carlo and O'Reilly will both play up top. Thomas Paul, USA, with that restart. Pat Reddick on the ball. 70th minute. USA and Canada are scoreless. Flighted long. Carlo in the air looking for box that's broken up. Here's where fresh legs can help out the United States. They have three pretty fresh players out there now and still have some subs that they can make. But again, beating a bunker defense is always a big challenge. It's good for the U.S. to see this because they may well see this in the Olympics. Coming through for Paolo! Switek! Nearly the game's first goal. This portion of the match brought to you by Gatorade. Corner kick for the United States. Ham is going to take it. Drives it near post. They get another corner kick out of it. As the Canadians cleared it out. on the ball from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Lights it over, far side. The Canadian Zura cleared it out. Warcraft settles. Pushed up by Wagner. Here comes the cross to Palo. Not a down, loose ball for Riley. And Hooper knocked that away. Another corner kick. Close call again. O'Reilly getting stuck in there against the veteran Charmaine Hooper. And Parlo as well. Both of them are really mixing it up. Seventy-second minute now. Played across. Down it goes, but Zora clears. Canada with no panic that time in the box. Madison. Over the top, that's a great ball for Lang. The USA chases her. Lang with a shot. And that's why she might be fatigued. That one was well off target. But what a good break there for Canada. You can see how dangerous they are on the counter. But here, look at Lindsay Tarpley working some magic in there to Cindy Parlo. Good through ball. That's another good through ball. And here's another chance. Beautiful ball by Mitz. And look at Parlo mixing it up there. But Heather O'Reilly, who plays with so much heart, goes against Charmaine Hooper trying to get that ball in the back of the net. Ball played up for O'Reilly. Switek after it. Almost going to give him a corner there. That's not what she wanted to do. Wanted to clear it, but to have it go over the sideline for a throw in. Again, under pressure because Heather O'Reilly never stops running up top. April says she's the most mobile front runner that they have. corner kick for the USA as Canada wants to make a change and I was right about Lang being out of gas she's coming out Asia Jamani is coming in eight games played seven goals for her also part of Canada's under 19 team she got all those goals in the Olympic qualifiers leading Canada Ham strikes it for Fox the back of the net but I believe she got it well April Heinrich said she would love to see some finishing and she's finally gotten it and really it was through just perfect organization on the set piece but it's Heather's goal that's her first international one look at Shannon Box making a commitment to keep this ball alive she just keeps it alive she's not trying to finish there but it's Heather Mitz who holds her positioning and just redirects and it is Heather Mitz, first international goal in her 11th straight start. And again, a great serve by Mia Hamm, but remember how it started. It was Heather O'Reilly's pressure on Switex causing her to serve a bad ball over the end line. 
going to talk about Canada being young and inexperienced there. That was a mistake that led to the corner kick that leads eventually to the goal. And sometimes games like this that remain so tight come down to set pieces. We see that so often. Meanwhile, Angela Hughes is up by the USA bench. So congratulations to Heather Mitz out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Here we go, Wales. Throwing is coming up. So in the calling it now the 73rd minute. To be brought for a Canadian corner kick. Of course, this is where the U.S. or any team that has just scored is always so vulnerable. Those next five minutes, they need to be buttoned up. You've scored, but stop celebrating the goal and button up on defense. Hughes is ready to come on. And Harry Seitz will allow the substitution for Alec Wagner. So, remember, those two were traded for one another at the end of what turned out to be the last WSA season. Hughes was going to play for San Diego, Wagner to Boston, and then the league announced that they were folding. That was a dramatic trade. Here's Timko in the corner. And that ball was out of play. One to nothing, USA. And it was perfect execution on a set piece, a corner kick here. Shannon Box keeping it alive. And look at Heather Mitz playing that position so well there in front of the goalkeeper. Again, holding her position there and just finishing. And that's a great look from our Phillips goal camp. 76th minute now as the road to Athens continues as portion of the match is brought to you by Chiquita. We'll see what that one goal does for this game. It opens it up. More for the USA or not. Hughes across for Ham. Back for Hughes. Toe pokes it ahead of the right. Mix in the right of the box. Cut off there. That's great hustle from Latham. Then given away and the US will get it back. Ham on the right side. Lofts it up for Carlo. A flick there was just wide. That would have been spectacular. Had it gone into the back of the net. What vision from Ham and Carlo nearly finished that one off. Of course, those two players have combined together for years. Very familiar with each other. And again, Parlo just tips it up over Switek, but it's wide. There's Larry and Josephine Parlo here in the stands. In fact, I think Cindy said she had 28 tickets for family and friends. They're from Memphis, so they're not all that far away, but we've seen them at many games in which extensive travel was undertaken, especially at World Cup 99. This ball played up. O'Reilly brings it down, plays it wide right. USA with possession. Harlow to O'Reilly in the turn. Hooper got in there. Another cross, and Hooper will knock it out. And it's another corner kick. USA scored off the last one there. And we'll go to take it, the most famous face in the history of women's soccer, Mia Hamm, and one of the most famous faces, certainly, in women's sports. 78th minute, Ham strikes it. It's headed for Box, and it's cleared away. Markraft will chase this down. Pressure there by Germani. Canada will have a throw in. And out it goes. This time it's the USA's ball in the 78th minute. Heather Mitz with the lone goal of this game in the 73rd minute. The first international goal. That's the difference right now. Got to get full marks to Canada for one practice session since March. They've well, done pretty well here. They're playing very smart. They know that the bunker defense bothers the United States and it becomes very difficult for them to figure it out. And at the same time, we've seen them be very potent on counterattacks. Latham trying to turn. Box out of tug there. Out it goes. USA's throw in for Reddick. Going long. Bringing it down. Carlo cuts past Cooper. They were teammates in Atlanta for the WUSA. Down they both go. A scramble for the ball, but it's picked up. Timko. Latham on the right. Knocked away by Kat Reddick. And Canada wants to make another change. Christine Latham is going to be coming out. Latham and Lang work so hard on the wings, it's no wonder if they're out of gas here. 
and Melissa Tancredi will be coming in for the Canadians. Leaving the game, number two. She's from Notre Dame, a 22-year-old. Getting some valuable playing time here. This one's up and out of play. Roman coming up for the United States. Canada has just the one sub left and the backup goalkeeper, who's Aaron McLeod. Fox with it. Wide left. Carlo. Harper. Push back. Here's Reddick. Far side to Mitz. 80th minute now. USA leading over Canada, one to nothing. Games that used to be blowouts with these two teams are no longer blowouts, no matter when they play. Except you could argue that one time when Canada brought their pretty much under 19 squad and were pasted by the USA six to nothing, but that was not their squad. Well, interestingly, now the U19 squad is feeding this full national team with a lot of quality players. You've mentioned it a couple times, JP, in this match already. These young players for Canada. Canada is focusing on the U19 level, and they're making a commitment to them. And again, we're seeing just some great development out of those young players. Christine Sinclair. USA commits that foul. <laughs> On an MLS Soccer Saturday, games have been played earlier today and some still going on in a game that you may have seen on ESPN2. Escondere and two goals, DC United blows out the Metro Stars 6-2. to two, Not a final, a game played earlier this afternoon at RFK Stadium. Columbus, with Butler and Cunningham scoring, leads the Chicago Fire. Dallas, Kansas City, 1-1 second half. Jason Price, the all-time leading goal scorer in Major League Soccer, scored one, that's 90 for Jason. Portion of the match brought to you by Bud Light. Approaching 81 minutes gone here in a well-contested game between two rivals, USA and Canada. Marcraft will bring it down. Shannon Box. Ham tripped up there. Tripped on her own. It looked like Marcraft. Chasing it down, back to Kristen Luckenbill, USA with a one to nothing lead here. Can't emphasize enough that a 1-0 lead is not a comfortable lead by any means because Canada's shown how dangerous they are on counterattacks. Shannon Box said such a great game. A lot of people might not realize her sister won an Olympic gold medal with the U.S. softball team in 96. And of course she has a chance to do that herself. Two Olympians in one family. Here is Hughes in different sports. Mm. Hughes to the right in that pass. Here comes the cross toward Ham. Mia couldn't settle it down. If she could have, that net was open and inviting. Canada looks for Sinclair. Rampone reads it well. Mitz for the pass up. Ham will chase it. This one blocked out of play. On the far sideline, throwing coming up. Heather Mitz is over there. Her goal is the difference in this one so far. USA with a one to nothing lead over Canada in the 83rd minute from Nashville. Ham defended by Morneau. Blocked by Morneau, stays with it. Jamani, broken up, that's Euclid. Broken up by Neal. And Freddy, broken up as well, the mids pass, and a foul right there. Free kick coming up for the United States. Heather Mitz was working in a studio at the last international tournament. Remember? Now she's playing. And she'll be one of those 18 in the upcoming Olympics. Well, she had a great chance to make the World Cup team, but she broke her leg. And of course, what a great tribute to her. her work rate and focus to come back and get healthy and get ready and played in for the Olympics. You please will have a go at it. But that's high and wide. That's wide tech. And there's Larry Parlow. Used to call him Little Larry. Can't really call him that anymore. But he just finished some time over in Iraq. And you talk about the uh, 
commitment by Larry and Josephine to Cindy and following her around. I'll tell you what, they're committed to all their kids. And I remember when he came back from Iraq and it was just such an emotional moment. It's good to have him back. Headed down, and there's Luckenville holding it. 84 minutes gone. Cindy Parlow, remember when she was the youngest U.S. player on the 96 Olympic team, so she'll be headed into her third Olympic competition. Ham on the ball, back to box. 16 to 6, edge and shots going to the U.S. They've got the only goal. Tartley on the run, plays it back off Hooper. Cleared by Morneau, nearly given away, but instead, Jamani will take it. And that ball is way off. Allows Reddick to pick it back up in the 85th minute. O'Reilly. Looking. A cutting ball. The Parlo running on to it. Parlo shot safe. Rebound saved. Switek. Two beauties for Switek. Parlo holes. And then Hooper knocks it out for a corner kick. Switek was brilliant on both of those. Oh, boy. I'll tell you what. Good opportunity there by Parlo, and that's an O'Reilly ball through. Hooper's got great pressure there. Parlo needs to lift that one. She's got Switek down, but great energy by both O'Reilly and Parlo in the second half. Let's go, Red! USA getting nine of their 16 shots on goal. Ham drives it, headed down, out of the box. Picked back up on the left side, back for Ham. In the 86th minute, USA up over Canada, one to nothing. Ham will get another corner kick for the United States. Mia wearing the armband after Julie Foudy had left, so she's right now the acting captain. Ham drives it, far side. Box in the air for Reddick. Reddick also another strong player in the air. We saw a lot of that during the last World Cup. The best in Major League Soccer will score off of the 2004 Sierra Mist MLS All-Star Game. It's live on ABC Sports, RK Stadium in Washington, D.C., 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, ABC and ESPN, home of the World Cup. Canada on the ball with Sinclair. Good ball, Tancredi with fresh legs. Didn't get off a very good shot. Luckily was able to stop that. Third shot on goal for the Canadians. Kristen Luckenbill a sub in her last three games, starting today with Brian Ascuri on the sideline, observing. But Bryce, clearly the number one goalkeeper. Luckenbill the backup, but this might be the only game where Bry gets a rest. It's good to see her uh, s smile on her face. She recently lost her father, who had been sick for some time. But she's taking a well-deserved mental break more than anything. And, and, and again, JP, I mean, against the Canada, Luckenbill, Luckenbill needs this type of yep. experience because if she goes in in the Olympics, it's going to be an arena that she's never experienced before. And she's from Minnesota. Next game will be in Blaine. And we'll see that smiling face, I'm sure, in Blaine later this month. Going long. Harlow oh, didn't get it. O'Reilly does. Right side, quick shot, but stopped. So I think really made one mistake today, and it resulted in a goal. But she's been very solid. And I say the mistake, that was in her clearance that led to the corner kick, not from uh, not making a save. Good point, JB, because there's no question that the U.S. really executed that corner kick perfectly. I'm not sure she could have stopped it, but she did. Tancredi going near side, and that one was off target as well. Baseball tonight is coming up next. If you keep it here on ESPN, Yankees-Mets, the Subway Series. It's always a wild one. Maddox chases history, and will the big unit stay in Arizona? Our guys will discuss that. Randy Johnson with Arizona just changing managers and that big contract. And I know the Yankees and Red Sox would like to have him. Here's the long ball up for O'Reilly. As she took the shot, Hooper got a piece it looked like. So the shot was not as strong as it could have been. But great takedown by O'Reilly under pressure. She 
prepared that ball right where she needed to. Here's Parlo. Cutting. Has Hammock in the run. Had her, but Hooper blocked it. Ham might have been able to walk in. 90th minute. Cat Reddick. That was a hard header from Mordeaux. Out of play it goes. USA will have a throw in. A minute will be added on in stoppage time. Box. Hughes plays it back. Marcraft. Sinclair. And Brady was going after. The foul was called. Canada will put it back into play. Time running out of the Canadians. One goal would tie it. They'll look for something off this set piece from way out. Mordeaux's over the ball. And on Terry Seitz whistle. She'll get the ball back into play. Floats it up. Luckenbill scoring to make that grab and hang on with Neil making a charge for it. She came out so strong and you could hear her call that ball and four of her defenders drop back into the face of the goal just in case. Very well organized. Kristen Luckenbill. Try to play that one long. Chris Hughes. Out of the right side, play back by the U.S. to box. Now left side to Ham. Less than a half minute to go. Carlo from Ham. Euclides, box on the right. Mitz will join her. She'll loft it up. Switek grabs it and hangs on. That should just about do it. Just seconds left. The Switek clears. Harry Seitz looks at the watch. Calls a halt to this one. Heather Mitz, strong game overall, defensively as well as offensively. She's our Chevrolet woman of the match, getting her first career international goal. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to the U.S. Soccer Foundation in the name of Heather Mitz. So, the road to Athens continues. We'll come back to Nashville and put the wraps on this one as the United States beats Canada 1-0. We make every Budweiser with the highest quality ingredients. We brew every Budweiser to be the freshest beer. We make Budweiser. You make it the king. Join us all summer long for ESPN 25. This week on Who's Number One, we're counting down the biggest blunders. From Leon Let It Go to a trombone tackle. Biggest blunders on Who's Number One this Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. At the ESPY Awards this year, best sports movie is between horses and hockey players. They shouldn't do this to... S Vote now for the ESPY Awards at ESPN.com. There are 10 good reasons why Lawrence Marshall in Hempstead is now the fastest growing Ford dealer in Texas. Huge 40 acre inventory, low Marshall discount prices, no hype, no hassle. We treat you like family. 0% financing, huge cash rebates. We've got the clobber line, 1-866 clobber. Have you seen the new Ford F-150? And the number one reason, Lawrence Marshall Ford in Hempstead clobbers big city prices. This is my town, my community, my home. You see, I grew up here, and local means a lot to me. Local means that someone knows my community, what we care about. And in a world which sometimes gets too big and too scary, 